Live 10 at 10 continues with no wait weather. Oh, we have a fair amount of clouds showing up on our Valley Sky Cam as we look off to the east southeast towards the full moon. Much of the Earth saw a partial lunar eclipse today, and uh, we're not going to see that. First of all, we have clouds. Second of all, not too visible here in North America. But it's interesting, this falls on that 50th anniversary. Here is a look at what we have going on outside. It's been a warm day, and we continue to be on the mild side. 76 in the 10 o'clock hour, light easterly wind. And 64 de uh, degree dew point temperature means it remains a little on the muggy side out there. We have 73 in Grand Forks and Thief River Falls. A cooler 70 degree reading right now in Jamestown. Off to the east, still near 70 for many, and 75 in Fergus Falls. And here is a peek at the radar. Right now, we're very quiet for most areas in Kidder County here and heading into Stutzman County. A few showers, but these have been well below severe criteria. A little bit of lightning with those crossing into the Medina area at this time. The more robust storms to the south, taking you in a little closer to Steele County, uh, or excuse me, Kidder County. From Steele out towards Medina is where we have this decreasing storm working its way eastward. So some showers have passed over the Jamestown area in the last half hour and the cloud top heights with these storms here on the northern boundary of all of our stormy activity very low on the order of 30,000 feet but when we look at the big picture down in South Dakota many of these storms blossoming upwards of 45 to 55,000 feet one near Mobridge as well so most of the energy in the atmosphere well out to the west as we head to bed tonight with numerous th severe thunderstorm watches in effect to the south South is where we're going to have the most energy, and as we go through the overnight hours, some of this energy will work its way into our western counties, but not until we get into that 2 o'clock in the morning time frame and beyond. Most of the stout stuff will be down to the south, and as we go through the overnight, there will be the risk of gusty straight line winds and maybe even some hail with these, but our latest model run we're showing you just now has them timing through the southern and central Red River Valley as we go towards daybreak. Then, the first half of our day, these showers and storms diminish in intensity and push northward, giving us a break in the midday hours. Many in the south will warm through the 70s to near 80 for highs. We'll stay in the 70s up north and out to the east thanks to the prolonged rainfall there. And then this heat of the day will fuel a few scattered thunderstorms in our afternoon and not expected to be severe at this point. We'll keep you up to date. So we're going to have a couple of rounds of uh, weather potential. First thing in the pre-dawn hours and early morning here in Fargo, I believe we'll have a break, so not thunder chances all day long. And then again in the late afternoon, a spotty chance at a shower. Hometown forecast shows temperatures cooler up to the north in the 70s, and the best chance at 80 degree readings will be in our southern valley. A nice photo sent here from Little Cormorant Lake. What a beauty. Dennis, thanks for taking the time to upload that. Now, as we go towards late week, we'll have one more very hot day. That happens on Thursday. Still a chance of a few storms here and there. On Friday and Saturday, most of us stay quiet as we enter the weekend on a cooler note. But by Sunday, a cold front moves through, and that'll bring a chance for some scattered showers if you're heading to the air show. So keep that in mind. Still not bad all day. Just a chance for a few showers. All right. Thanks, Satch. Mm -hmm. Up next.